I'm going to get out of the way and introduce Matt G, uh, who's uh, kicking it off tonight. And Matt is a local here in Los Angeles and really got inspired by Instagram and, and this digital revolution that we're in and has been crushing it uh, ever since. So Matt, uh, take it away. All right, uh, is that good? It's good, okay. Um, all right, I uh, just wanna thank This Is Ground and everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, super excited to share with you guys. Uh, full disclosure, I don't think I've talked to this many people since like my junior high graduation. <laughs> so bear with me if I'm a little nervous about it. Um, I kind of wanted to approach tonight um, a little differently and sort of share my relationship with travel. It's been a, about a 10 year relationship so far and it's gone well, it's gone well. Um, but I wanted to share you know, some photos that really uh, have meant a lot to me over the last 10 years. And uh, let me see if I can get this slide thing to work because I've never used this before. Okay, all right, so it's Thursday, so we're gonna have Throwback Thursday right now. This is uh, me, 2007. I'm probably clocking in at maybe 131 pounds, possibly. Um, super happy, obviously, to be here at the Sphinx in Egypt. Um, I got the opportunity to uh, spend three months doing a, a study abroad program uh, and during my senior year in college. Um, we were studying in Italy, so that was super cool. Um, we got to go to uh, the UK and France, uh, Greece, Egypt, and uh, Germany while I was there. And so it was a super exciting uh, time of life for me. I had never really been out of the country before. I remember getting off the train station in Paris and hearing um, French on the loudspeakers and seeing all the signs in French. And it was just like super overwhelming to be in a place like you've just never you know, been in a country where they even spoke another language before. So during this kind of uh, three month period, travel was just really fun for me. I loved it. I loved the, the smells and the food and getting lost and trying to find our way around. And it was just an amazing time and really the best three months anyone could ask for. So I, I kind of come back from this trip. Um, definitely, I have an addictive personality, so I had that travel bug, and I wanted to just see the world and do all this stuff. And then something happened. Um, I graduated, and I got a job, and uh, I started the nine to five life, and it kind of sucked. But it was cool, though, it was cool. Um, I worked as a designer at a landscape architecture firm in Orange County, and so I did that for five years, and uh, I'd never left the country another time during that five-year period, which is really sad coming off of a trip like this. Um, so I kind of came to this point, and I promise there's more pictures than just this picture of me. You don't have to <laughs> stare at me <laughs> all night. <laughs> there's a long intro, but we'll get moving. <laughs> um, so I kind of came to this point where I was super restless, and uh, I needed a change. And so I went home, and I uh, opened my laptop, and pulled up Google, and I typed in, how to quit your job and travel. And I read all the blogs, and I was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do with my life. I need a change. I need to get out of here. And so I, I confided in one of my good friends, and I told him, I'm like, listen, man, I, I got to quit. I can't do this anymore. I need to travel. I need a change in my life. And so he's like, well, did you ever think about teaching, doing like a teaching program? And he had just done something similar in China the year before. And uh, I was like, no, I don't teach. I mean, obviously, I've never, I haven't spoken in like 20 years to anyone. So I'm like, no, I, I've never thought of that, but I'll, I'll look into it. And so I looked into it, and uh, that's what I decided to do. So, okay, it worked. Um, so that summer, this is 2013, I uh, quit my job. I went to China for uh, two or three months, and I worked with Chinese English teachers there. Um, a really, really uh, meaningful time period for me. Um, this is photo was taken in my classroom the day before our first uh, day of classes. And uh, I do like this photo a lot, but it's definitely one of my favorite photos um, that I've taken just because of the, the meaning behind it and sort of the story, um, you know, that time period for me. So, so travel kind of uh, took a turn, I guess. It wasn't just something that was really um, self, um, What's the word I'm looking for? I wasn't just self-seeking, I guess. I wasn't just looking what I could get out of it. It was actually me being able to contribute to the place that I was living in. And so it was a very, very exciting time for me. My family's Chinese, so I also felt like, you know, got to get to know the roots a little bit, <laughs> a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I spent a couple months there teaching. I spent a month traveling afterwards. And uh, 
I went to Australia for a month after that. Um, was there for uh, about three weeks by myself, which I discovered is my threshold for traveling alone. I couldn't take much longer than that. Um, so that was a, you know, it was a really uh, transformative year for me to travel and spend that time away. Um, so I came home from that, and uh, you know, I was really into photography. I kind of neglected to mention that during that time period when I was working um, at the landscape architecture firm, I got into Instagram and into photography. And so I was really exploring a lot locally, but I hadn't really gone out of the country, like I said. So when I came home, I was obviously into photography a lot by this time, and I really wanted to see these places that were closer to me and more accessible. So I became obsessed with national parks. Um, this is Yosemite. I'm sure you've seen this view a lot on Instagram. It's pretty popular these days. Um, but yeah, Yosemite, Death Valley, Joshua Tree, I just loved being outside. I loved exploring, um, going up to like places in California. This is in Mono Lake, up near Mammoth. Um, so just really kind of going to places that uh, were always kind of close to me, but maybe I didn't really explore that much before as a photographer. Um, trying to see places in different seasons. This is uh, obviously in fall. Um, so yeah, and then going up more towards you know the Pacific Northwest. This is uh, Oregon, Cape Kiwanda. So really getting to know places and kind of that transition of not thinking that travel was always something you had to do for three months or something you had to be like, oh, I've got to quit this thing or transition you know, a whole part of my life to spend three months doing something. It was really places that I could go on the weekend or maybe a long you know, weekend trip, but places that were mostly accessible by car. Um, but of course, you know, I've been to a few other places. Uh, this is in Israel. Um, I've been fortunate to go there a couple times in the last few years. And uh, you know, definitely a change to go to the Middle East. There's a lot going on there, a lot of uh, politics and religion and all that good stuff. Um, definitely challenging for me as a photographer because I really like shooting outdoors and I like landscapes and nature. So going to a place like this where I get the chance to try to capture stories and moments like this man praying here um, at the Western Wall is, uh, is a definitely a welcome challenge for me. Uh, another spot, this is in Iceland. You just said the name. I can't pronounce the peninsula that it's taken at, but it's there. <laughs> um, but yeah, just uh, you know, a lot of times in my photography, I really like to um, capture those like simple, minimalistic uh, moments in the landscape. That's kind of the aesthetic that I enjoy. Um, this is taken in uh, Blue Ridge Parkway, North Carolina, Tennessee area. Um, another spot that really um, I probably would have never gone to had I not made friends on the internet, which is a huge thing as I've been discussing with some people tonight. Um, so yeah, uh, that's one other big takeaway I've had just from all this traveling is just the connecting and not only connecting with the people that I've traveled with, but also the people that I've met. Um, yeah, looking back on the teaching experience and the, uh, the studying abroad program, it's really the, the people that I've got to spend the time with and the people that I've met that have really resonated with me. And those are the memories that I kind of hold um, after all these years rather than just the places. So anyways, uh, back to me again. Um, yeah, so 10 years later, uh, it's been definitely a huge journey. Um, for me, kind of my own personal takeaways with travel is to just really take the opportunities to do it when you have them and uh, to make opportunities happen when you don't. I've kind of been in both camps and uh, I've never regretted any dollar I've spent, any uh, time I've spent doing it. It's always been a super um, enriching uh, thing for me.